All right, all right, all right. What's up? What's up, folks? Man, we're gonna get into some quick boxing talk. I'm gonna bring the OG legendary Fresno Kendo up on here, man. We're gonna talk some boxing, get his viewpoints on this upcoming fight, talk about a little bit of his history. Uh, uh, you know, how we got introduced into the sports. We know he's being trained by um, uh, Papa uh, Trinidad. So Trinidad's father, their time spent in Puerto Rico, going to some of that, his foundation, uh, and also going to his early phases with Floyd and them coming up through the amateur system. Floyd, Nate Jones, all of them going through the system and uh, what they're doing for youth out there in Chicago. So just sent the link out, was catching up on that, uh, on that, championship game that just went down salute my brother trey salute salute was catching that championship game that dang denver nugget man that denver nugget game was off the damn wall man and it's unfortunate man that miami went through a, a drought man it seemed like they couldn't get nothing going on the inside man that's just how much of a threat that damn uh Jokic plays uh, uh down in the center man down low man you can't get nothing in there and i don't know why miami Felt the need to constantly drive. It was like they wouldn't pull up shots since they couldn't get nothing on the inside. These dudes go desperate for fucking three points, three point shots. That final shot from uh, that last shot put up there by Jimmy Butler. I wish he would have took a little bit more time on that. Was slew my brother Doug right side, slew myself in the chat. But if Jimmy would have put took a little bit more time on that shot, but the game was really over. They're down by five. It wasn't too much he can do, man. He was carrying the team on his back. They didn't have no shooters out there. So it was what it was, man. It was just ultimately nothing they could do with, with Murray and Jokic out on that floor. And as well as Gordon, you had other dudes that really contributed contributed to this damn victory tonight, man. They were out there. They were out there doing their things. But there was things that I think Miami could have done had guys just start putting up fucking shots. These dudes act scared to put up the damn shots. You had... I like to see that Gordon Gordon ends up getting the championship. I thought he was pretty good defensively. Didn't put up much offensively, but defensively, I thought he was critical. I like what Pope, uh, 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 Caldwell Pope, those those last two plays that he made were some crucial plays in the game. Uh, uh, but Jokic, that motherfucker's a monster, man. The first, like I said before, I thought he's just getting a lot of white hype around him. But the guy's out here doing this damn thing, man. And, I, I you know, I would have liked to see Jimmy Butler win one. But it should have been more more put out there, man. That other center, man, I wish he would have done more uh, uh, on the defensive end to kind of stop Jokic. It's just like Jokic don't even fucking need the jump to fucking just make buckets. The dude doesn't need the jump, man. And his ability with the ball, uh, uh, getting to that basket, it's like, damn, who, who's in the league that's going to stop this dude? Who in the league can stop him? See what he did to the Lakers. AD about the only center that could try to give this guy some damn some damn resistance or issue. And AD was super ineffective, especially with Murray out there on the floor. And this guy can move around. So, like I was saying, man, these NBA teams, they have some real searching to do out here. They have some real searching to to if they're serious about winning the championships. Because other than that. Uh, the league for a while, for a year or two, is Denver's league, man. And, and Denver's going to make make sure they go back because that city's going to fucking love the feeling they're going to get from winning this championship. They have a face of the front of the organization who's a white guy. Like some people say, sometimes people need white champions, white uh, uh, top-level athletes. And this white dude earned it. He earned it. Like I said, when he's getting them MVPs, I wasn't too much rocking with seeing that shit. I'm like, are they hyping this guy up or is this guy the truth? So this year I ended up watching a little bit of this shit and it's like, damn, this dude can play. He can play on all ends of this fucking court and he's effective. He he, he distracts well defensively. Even without him being involved in plays, he shuts a lot of shit down. And like you've seen it with Miami, even with Jimmy and them trying to attack and the rest of the team just defensively. Denver, when I'm watching this shit, I'm like, Denver is playing some hellified fucking defense out here. It was just like nothing that those other players, man. And this is the problem when you get people or, or even, even things that are termed when I watch basketball, even listen hearing the commentaries and basketball talk and talk about role players. Why are you drafting motherfuckers to play a role on a team? Like, no, yeah, you're going to have people with, with greater leadership skills that can lead push the team, but motherfuckers got to start being contributors to the fucking game. Like, that's bullshit. The right side says Joker got skills. 
says can't jump worth the damn says but he uh uses his size length and iq says a kill mofo says it's great to watch yeah he don't jump at all i was like seeing him put up shit without even launching off the damn ground and it's like he almost shooting downwards at the basketball he must got some long fucking arms because what does it do let me go to this stat like i said i don't know too much about Jokic, but i know he got to be a seven footer or something man his arms probably down there seven feet long as well because he don't jump for shit and his shots are just like on fucking point on point but miami miami just got to bring in some other players man uh they can let uh what's that cat uh kevin love go off into the sunset he can just retire him out and they need to go find some guys man so oh Jokic is 6 11 so it's seven foot but motherfucker the motherfucker arm span got to be stupid man because he's doing shit without jumping this fool nba stats are fucking crazy as i'm looking at this shit this fool averaged 24 points 11 point damn near 12 rebounds a game along with damn near 10 assists a game so damn near average a triple double throughout the whole fucking season which is fucking amazing that shit is amazing <laughs> and this shit just tells you it just tells you who this dude is what he is and his value to this damn team that shit is crazy that shit is crazy so we just waiting up on the uh og let me see if he's able to uh log in like i said we had delayed it let me see let me tell him i'm live let me see i'm live and we're gonna get some get some talk see if we get them on here but we was up there watching that uh watching that dang uh game and then the rice i said he's six foot eleven with a seven uh seven seven wingspan or something crazy yeah yeah i believe his wingspan is is like i say i think his wingspan is longer than his height man because i was like damn i ain't never seen the person be able to shoot like that without getting off the ground man but his ability to shoot the fool's accurate with his shooting man very very accurate with his shooting and he's on point with his shit. kenny porter's right hand salute my brother says salute to myself in the chat yeah that fool them fools did they damn thing but i can't wait to see what next season look like uh don't don't know what the lakers are gonna do i don't i don't know what the lakers are gonna be able to do next year man i think I think uh golden state's gonna have to go after someone they're gonna have to find a young talent and i see they got that little what's that little black kid out of uh out of france that seven foot five kid but he like coordinated as hell i wonder what he's gonna be able to do in the league man he's a tall ass dude but uh and he don't need to go about putting on weight because that's the same shit they were saying kevin durant need to do uh but this dude is a tall lethal lethal uh score so they should just leave him as he is and you charles in the building salute and that's always the thing when you deal with these flawed ass organization and these half-ass uh uh nba level coaches who always want to change the dynamics of a player that that skinny kid they don't feel like he need to put weight on and this and that because like i said when durant came out of texas they was talking that same shit with durant oh he's undersized durant couldn't lift uh couldn't lift for a goddamn because i think in a combine they show him lifting the what they lift in the nba 185 or 175 he can barely lift that shit and they was thinking he gonna get knocked around that's one of the most prolific scores in the history of this damn game so that whoever whatever's that that french tall kid's name they shouldn't change the damn thing about him and then deuce time says kd did uh put uh says he says he did need to put on weight did, i don't see kd putting on much weight like that i don't see him put on no weight because weight doesn't benefit kd's game it doesn't benefit him he's explosive he's quick great 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 handle as a tall dude and his ability to shoot just to get around guys does he did he need to get a little bit stronger yeah possibly but not to bulk up or any of that maybe he did bulk up a little bit but i don't think he he masked up that that much from what he came out says kd especially says kd especially need need heart now i don't think kd i don't think kd's issue was heart kd issue was like teammates that he played around the right side yeah that's that dude named win by yami one by says dude can hoop says i saw a dude shoot a, uh says shoot a three missing cast the rebound off the rim says and flush it yeah that kid can ball man but i i don't i want to see if his talents you know transcends to this next level does it, does it transfer up to this next level that he's going to and i think he'll catch up with the tempo and speed but people like people can scout when they know what 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 talents has the ability to do like they scouted with colby what he is able to do as a high school kid kg 
and all these dudes lived up to it. You even seen that potential in fucking what's the fool mess with all the damn porno chicks getting them pregnant? Fucking recent dude. We talked about him yesterday. Uh Williamson. Williamson. Even he has that potential, but I think he about to lose that shit chasing after these hoes and uh uh eating food and shit, trying to blow up like the big bitches he be smashing. He he gonna lose it, man. But Zion has that potential, man. And I think Juan Bayani got it too. Deuce Time says Juan Bay says ain't gonna be ain't gonna be all that. I wouldn't doubt him, man. I wouldn't doubt him. A lot of people doubt these young dudes when you see the talent there. And I think a lot of these dudes to me who can bypass going to college are the dudes that can make it. It's just gonna be staying focused. I think he comes from he comes from a place to where they're going to stay focused on. He's going to be able to stay focused and not get distracted. Hopefully, hopefully he doesn't get distracted. I hope he don't get don't get uh, uh, distracted coming into the league or, or whatever else put out here by him. But uh, man, I'm trying to see if the OG. I don't think he'll be going to be able to get on. So fuck it, we're going to turn this into uh, some other shit. Let me drop the link. So if he comes in. Then I'll uh, uh, kick out of it. But I took off. Like I say, I took off for tomorrow because I am going to cover that goddamn. Uh, uh, for one, I'm covering that Donald Trump shit and I'm covering that damn. Uh, what's that thing called? What's that shit called? The press conference tomorrow for uh, Earl Spence versus uh, Terrence Crawford. I'm definitely covering that shit. So I, I make sure I ain't going in tomorrow. I got to be on on I got to be on as soon as that shit start cuz I'm ready to hear the kind of shit they going to talk tomorrow. I can't wait to hear that shit. Angie Charles says boken up says ain't ain't the uh the only answer for strength. Says you can uh keep the same physique says and still tighten up uh tighten up your muscles like uh like iron. Yeah, I think he can get stronger but not the bulk up. Like he can get his legs stronger upper body stronger but mainly you just want to make sure you can you fucking have uh uh uh, uh what is that i'm looking for uh uh the cardio that you just want to make sure you have that cardio man that you can be able to go into this this faster the, the tempo of this game is going to be much faster you're going to deal with guys so you don't have that great of a height advantage up over you don't have the greatest of speed advantages you want to make sure you develop into where your fucking shot is on point even Kobe was saying that early in his career where he's having a few of those struggles and where he recognized where the flaws were was strengthening his legs. He needed to get his legs stronger. And that's exactly what he did and be able to carry himself. If he's staying in the game for 40 minutes, that he has the ability to stay fresh and maybe come out maybe a minute and a quarter. Take him out a minute, a minute, a quarter, two minutes, a quarter. And he's able to recover just real, real, you know. Just do hard work through training, through uh, uh, the camps, whatever off season, get his training in, strengthen his stuff. The right side says that seven two says being able to shoot like he can says there's a place for him in the league. Absolutely, says nobody can defeat his shot or defend his shot. Says better take it from uh, take it better take it from him when he puts it on the uh, ground because he can dribble too, right? The kid got handles like a motherfucker from what I've I've seen some highlights. I ain't seen a full game of his. But the highlight, but like scouts know what they see. You know what you see in the potential of a kid by what they just do out there on the floor. And it's just up to these kids to stay focused. Focus is the the only detriment to a lot of these dudes who have a, a, a supreme abilities in, in these sports. Supreme abilities in these sports, man. The only the the only enemy to a lot of these dudes is themselves. A lot of them get in their own way, man. But hopefully that dude, Wayambi, how you say his name, stays focused on this sport. My cousin says Nuggets ain't going to do shit. Shit, man. You got beliefs in the Clippers, cuzzo. The Nuggets going back to this shit because the Nuggets got the team right here. And they're going to add pieces, bring young players there. They got the proper leadership. They ain't got no – the thing that works for the Nuggets is they don't have no hothead motherfuckers on their, on their team. The biggest hothead on their team to me is probably Jokic. Yo, yo, Jokic's the only one – Yoke is the only one that that a bump heads with motherfuckers. That's the only nigga bump heads with it. But but I don't think I don't I don't think they got any uh, uh any any uh, uh issues with players like no ego on that motherfucking team, and that's the thing that works. Same thing that worked with with uh what's that shit? Golden State with their reign, they don't have players who are egotistical, players who are like I'm the leader, this and that. They don't deal with none of that shit. They just have a team that is equally balanced and shit and they got a lot of good leaders on that on that squad 
And I see that shit with Denver. I don't see Denver with no egotistical motherfuckers. These people know their assignments, know the role, know how to win games, and fuck, the motherfuckers going to do it. But they're going to be there because, oh, you you a Clipper fan. You've been having beliefs in the Clippers for, what, decades and shit or a decade, and it just ain't panning out. But like I say, teams got to get serious about the way in which they, they develop their teams and build them instead of building them on this media this media criteria of a team a super team and just stacking them with bullshit ass people and the kenny porter's right hand says one 500 says for my co-worker on the uh on the finals shout out to us uh, shout out to the nuggets absolutely man you better hope that uh co-worker pay that shit i wouldn't bet motherfuckers man you deal with motherfuckers you be ready to knock their head off when they don't pay you your shit after making a bet i'll be i'll be man i'll be it'd be hard for me to want to bet regular people and shit Deuce Ty says, I'm glad DJ and Reggie says got a ring, though. Wait, who is uh, which Reggie? I'm glad uh, uh, DJ got a ring as well. I'm glad DeAndre Jordan got a ring. I didn't even know he was still in the fucking league. To be honest, I had no idea uh, uh, DeAndre was still in the league. Who is Reggie? Oh, is that Reggie? Let me see. Is that that Reggie Jackson dude? Let me see. Who is Reggie? Is that the, the short black dude? Let me see. Yep, yep, Reggie Jackson. Yeah, I, I didn't follow Jackson, Reggie Jackson too much. I didn't follow him too much. Let me see who else on this fucking team. Let me see. Let me see. Who else is on their squad that I'm I'm happy to see win some shit? Just really DeAndre Jordan. Oh, Jeff Green was on that motherfucker. Jeff Green on there. So I'm happy to see Jeff Green get him one as well. And and I'm I'm happy to see uh uh Caldwell Pope win him one as, as well. Happy to see him get one, man. But salute to Jeff Green, man, earning him himself a goddamn uh, ring with this team. Because Jeff doesn't have a ring, right? Who who have just played for? I know he's with OKC. Uh, who else he played with? I don't think he won a ring with nobody, right? He got close with OKC. But who else he won with? I think that's the only team uh, Jeff Green has won with, right? So salute to him. I'm happy to see that shit for Jeff Green and shit. And the cool breeze says good vibes. He says Jeff Green. Yes, yeah, salute to Jeff Green getting him a ring tonight, man. He if he stay with them, if they keep him on the team, man, he may win and one next year because Denver probably definitely gonna win this shit. But then again, Miami just need a few more pieces and shit. Miami may need to have to go go after a good big and shit. Miami may need another good big, man. And and they have to find when they start. They need the and the problem is where you have these issues in the league and shit. Is that these colleges ain't developing these motherfuckers, man? There's a problem in development of of a lot of these athletes and shit. A lot of them ain't being developed, man. They leave, they get developed through fucking the youth leagues, a little bit of high school, and then after that, it's just like, all right, you got the talent, we'll take you at this D1 level school, and then that's that's that. Deuce Time says, uh, Clippers, here we go. We got the OG up in this mug, man. <laughs> Salute to the OG. What's happening? What's going on? What's good with you? Oh man, chilling, chilling, man. How you enjoy that game? Oh man, I was on my, you know, pins and needles. But you know what? Yeah, I'm an underdog fan, so you know who I was really rooting. I'm proud for Jokovic. You know what I'm saying? The, the dude was fantastic. One of the greatest set in history. And his, you know, partner in crime. You know that. You know, oh boy, the point guard. That dude was cold blooded. Oh yeah, that Murray kid. Yeah, that yeah, Murray, that Murray was no joke. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Let's go ahead and introduce you to everybody, man. Cool. Yeah, go ahead. We got friends of Kendall in the building, man. If you want to give us a a, a little bit of a, a, a chronological uh, uh, detail of your 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 life going into boxing, when did you get started? How you get started going into the amateurs, meeting Floyd, working with Nate Jones, the Olympics. And then your work with Trinidad and them. Oh man, okay. Yeah, my name is Fast Fred. I'm known as Fast Fred. Started boxing at the age of 13 in Chicago. Was born in Puerto Rico, but raised in Chi Town. And uh, yeah, my older brother Hector, he uh, started boxing, bringing a lot of trophies back in 86, 80, you know, around 86. You know, I was like 12, going on 13 at the time. And, and it motivated me to want to start learning to box. So, you know, I told my mom, mom, I want to do that too, you know, bring some trophies in. And, you know, we both came from the Chicago Park District, Hamlet Park, me and my brother that, you know, produced pretty uh, good champions. David Diaz, just to name, you know, a few, who's a WBC lightweight champ, champ came from the same uh, Park District that I came from. 
and uh, yeah, you know, boxing was was my thing. It got me away from the streets and you know, possibly in the gangs and stuff like that. Uh, here I am, you know, started uh, winning the national gold medal. Met Floyd Mayweather at the age of six. Well, Floyd was sixteen, I was nineteen. We both won the nationals, man. To this day, we still stay friends. And uh, you know, five Golden Gloves, you know, five yeah championships in the Golden Gloves, and here I am getting ready to turn pro in '96. Actually, fought Nate Jones, who's my former arch rival from the Cabrini Greenhouse projects, and I was from Lake Home projects. Uh, and uh, you know, we ended up uh, you know doing battle, trying to make that Olympic team. He ended up edging me by one point. You know, the rest is history. We both turned pro back in 1997. You know, word around the town, everybody knew I was going to be a more accomplished professional. And the experts were right. And, and you know, how boxing is, we're supposed to, you know, meet up in the pros. But, you know, unfortunately, he never made it to that level. And I just kept on upgrading, upgrading and, and, and stayed in that world championship levels for many, many years. And now, thank God, you know, here I am years later. Uh, Nate Jones is out on his luck. I came back to the city, you know, I ended up, you know, blessing him because he was selling CDs and tapes in the project. But one good thing that I can say, you know, Floyd Mayweather ended up, you know, heard about it and ended up scoop of made up for the Cabrini Green projects, you know, where Nate was born and raised and, and started, you know, working for the money team, which is a good thing, which I give Mayweather props for that. And then, you know, myself, you know, towards his end of it of Mayweather's career. You know, Mayweather started doing the exhibitions, but Nate hasn't really been with Mayweather these days. He's been with me. You know, my foundation, you know, programs that I have, my foundation, we up, we're in the city, city of Chicago, and also sub, sub uh, Chicago suburbs as well. And Nate's like my main man, my right hand man to work with these at risk youth, you know, underprivileged kids, like how we were growing up in a housing project. So and we continue a great legacy with my great foundation. And also Nate got a, a beautiful foundation himself. And uh, man, the rest is history. You know, I ended up finally getting recognized as a world champ 20 years later, you know, from that uh, debacle against Chris Burns. You know, the WBC ended up doing the resolution. They blessed me. I got that beautiful green and gold belt official. Oh, hey, bring, can you bring it close? I had, I had it I had it at the Puerto Rican parade. You guys see my Instagram. You guys can go. There you go, the real gold. That mug look heavy, man. <laughs> I've got the crown, man. Here we go for all these years. These kids love it. These are pictures of my mom. You know, my dad, may he rest in peace. He's the one that motivated me, you know, to get in the game. You know, there's my foundation. There's my beautiful mom. A picture of her when she was in the National Golden Girls cheering her teenage son to victory. And, he, you know, this is the championship. As you can see, Oh, man, that's the, the signature from the main man, who, Mauricio Suman, the Prez, the first born Puerto Rican heavyweight champion, man. This is an honor. This is, a, uh, you know, one of the greatest section and bodies in boxing. And that's why, you know, they now want to show me love. I praise them because they're for the fighters. They're not for their pockets. They're not like the WBA, you know, WBO. You know, I mean, the IBF, hopefully, you know, he makes a decision and crown me with that with my IBF belt, you know, against Chris Burr. But, you know, I'm keeping it 100, you know, hey, man, I'm the voice for these voiceless, you know, fighters in the community, you know, and, you know, we, we, we have something to speak up, and that's me, you know, it made me a poster child, and hey, man, these are the fruits of my hard labor, and man, I love strapping this belt and showing it to the youth, especially at the Puerto Rican parade. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, what was the process to get them to, over, to overturn that, that decision? Yeah, they do a resolution, actually, at the... Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame, the WBC did a resolution when Fernando Vargas, I think he fought Javier Castillo, and I guess Fernando Vargas was never recognized as a WBC champ, but they overturned it, and Fernando Vargas got crowned. And then uh, this past November, I was at the WBC convention, 60th anniversary, and they overturned when Jeff Fennick fought Azuma Nelson. You know, Azuma Nelson was the defending champ. And Jeff Fennett clearly dominated Azula Nelson over 12 rounds. And, you know, it was a heartbreak. It, was, it reminded me of Chris Bird in my fight. And, and Mauricio Suleiman, they ended up, you know, having a resolution, overturn it. And seeing Jeff Fennick, who's a great trainer, actually he was one of Mike Tyson's trainers, uh, one of the all-time greats. I think he was like a lightweight, 
you know, featherweight. And, uh, man, he ended up getting one of these now, man. And uh, it's good that WBC is taking the step. You know, they're the first one to do the VADA to make sure they put, you know, these drug addicts, you know, boxing drug addicts, I call them, you know, the steroid users, you know, illegal, man. You know what I'm saying? And and as, and as a black guy to the sport, but the WBC took that step. And I'm hoping uh, the IBF, the WBA, the WBO, you know, take, you know, suit and do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Because – that's what boxing needs, us the fighters, man. So they care for us, man, not for their pockets, you know, and the promoters and the management. Absolutely, absolutely. And 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 during your your career, man, I know you had some issues or during that time where there were managers taking advantage of a lot of these fighters. Have any of these managers ever been brought up on criminal charges where fighters were able to take them to court and, and, and recoup some of the money that was taken away from them? Or is it, is it just something that no, no manager or promoter has ever been found guilty of any, any type of exploits? No, actually, my dear friend, you know, one of my heroes, you know, growing up, um, uh, pretty sure you heard of him, ter terrible Terry Norris, who pretty much put Sugar Ray Leonard in retirement when he uh, fought a lot of championships. He sued Don King, you know what I'm saying? The promoter. And uh, I'm pretty sure his management and all that. And he ended up winning that case. And uh, it was some other cases that that um, Mike Tyson, to name a few, you know, he got that money over Don King and, and these other cutthroats management company. And here I am, you know, years later, suing, filing a suit against the WBA. Unfortunately, I got to go to Washington to file a suit. You know, it was in Chicago, but they, they got, you know, when I fought for the championship, I guess when you sue them. It's got to be in the state of Washington, so that's what I'm doing now. But I'm also currently, you know, in this Chapter 13 federal case against uh, Manuel Char. You know, I guess it's called Mahmoud Char. You know, that phony uh, German. Right, right. I guess he's from uh, Syria or somewhere, wherever he's from. But uh, but he's bogus. You know, he tested positive for steroids. So I ended up suing his multi-millionaire you know, promotion company, you know, and, and we're in the process right now. And, uh, you know, I'm in the Chapter 13, you know. Uh, they put me in hardship, you know, financial hardship. But you know what? God is good. I've been blessed. Like I said, you know, I got a great foundation going, giving it to a lot of youth. And I've been blessed. And, uh, you know, so make sure you guys check me out on my Instagram, Fres Okendo. And also my Instagram on my foundation, you know, F-O-B-A Foundation, which is FOBA Foundation, as you see on my head. That's, the, that's my passion. That's my passion. I'm going to pull up on the screen as well. Cool. I'm gonna pull up on the screen, man. And and cool. also, man, what are your thoughts on these upcoming fights, man? What are the fights that that in, in current boxing, man, that have you excited, man? If you follow in the sport, yeah, yeah, I still you know follow it. You know, um, it's a great fight coming up. Um, you know, I'm always an underdog. Crawford, you know, he's a beast, man. Um, it's gonna be a, a you know a tough fight for for Spence. You know, you know, I'm going for Spence. You know, it's more of a Technical, strong, body punching type fighter, but uh, Crawford, you know, he's a freak of nature. You know, he's he's very durable, and uh, man, it's gonna be a great fight. And then, so how how you really see that fight going, man? What do you what do you think of the the, the pluses and minus uh, that you see with Crawford that that Spence has to overcome, and if there's any pluses and minus that Crawford has to overcome with with uh, Spence? Yeah. Uh, Spence, uh, you know, he's very strong, a great body punch, as you can see when he fought uh, the Cuban, he broke a couple of his ribs, but against Crawford, man, Crawford is a freak of nature, he's unorthodox, he can switch left and right, and man, ain't nobody been able to uh, decode him, you know, and, and it's going to be rough to try to beat Crawford, man, and then, you know, again, Spence too, he's a freak of nature, but, you know, that car accident, you know, I thought he was never going to be the same, but he's ended up, you know, showing after every fight from the Mikey Garcia to the Ugas fight. You know, he showed, you know, great poise and power and, and dominance. So, so you know, my gut feeling is just, just Crawford, dude, is a freaking, I ain't seen nobody really put it on him. And, and, and Spence, too. But I'm going for Spence. You know, I'm an underdog. You know, I go, I, I go for, the, for the people that people don't think that's going to make it. But... Crawford, you know, he's a hard dude to beat, man. I'm going, you know, I'm going with Spence from the heart. But as far as reality, I mean, yeah, Crawford is, 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 is a monster, you know. 
Dang, you see, you think Craw you see Crawford that that highly rated? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't highly rate, you know, because I'm I'm not a really a Crawford fan. To tell you the truth, I'm more of a uh, Spence fan, and that's you know I, I look forward for Spence. It's just Crawford. <clears throat> I haven't seen him really, you know, being in any both of the fighters, you know. So to to answer your question. It's a pick and fight, but I'm going for, for Spence. It's a pick and fight, but I'm going for Spence. Absolutely, absolutely. Tomorrow, these guys have their uh press conference out there in LA. So tomorrow's oh. their first time meeting each other oh, face okay. to face. Cool. Oh man, yeah, check it out. What time is gonna be on ESPN? Or what's gonna be on? I think it's uh, no, it's going it's a uh uh what's that showtime? So it's gonna be on their uh YouTube channel. Let okay. me get the time. I'll get the time for you. Uh uh let me pull it up. And you have okay. Bruce Gass want to ask you your opinions on Victor Conti. <laughs> Victor Conti. Oh, man. You know, when it comes to people with that madness, you know, my career was cut short because of these illegal you know, savages. You know, I call them illegal savages because in boxing, man, you've got to be an even playing field, man. There's no shortcut to success. Fight like a man, man. You know, I, I came from humble beginnings from the housing project. Who's going to teach me to throw some synthetic you know, things that's going to kill you, it's going to shock your liver, your kidneys. I mean, and that's Conte, man. You know, he used to put that hurt on Sugar Shane. Many other fighters, I don't want to add no names up there because I really don't know it. I don't care. But that dude, was, it was a controversy. But I heard he changed or whatever. And I don't know. I, I, I All I know about him is controversy, man. Cheating, you know, doping. Right. So and you, you have been in, in the ring against fighters that you think have been on that stuff? Yes. Oh, of course, man. When I fought Craig Bird. You know, I mean, I don't know if you've seen Bird lately, man. You know, and that's my yeah, man. I ain't made nothing wrong. Yeah, he, he's shriveled up now. Man, that's what I'm saying, man. I mean, I'm looking like I, I can still fight people. It was amazing. When I went, I just went to the IBF convention last week. You know, Daryl's people, all the IBF committee, the presidents, everybody. It's like, man, Fred, you look like you still fight, you know, because I, you know, I was natural at all times, you know, and, and uh, that's what happens, man. When you take some synthetic, you know, things and you put in your body, time will tell. And man, it's just sad that you know, at, at a young age, Chris Burr had to, you know, his shoulder replaced, his his, his hips replaced, and you know, it, pretty much his body is plastic. It's just sad. It breaks my butt. Good man, you know, give me a number of respect. He got on his pod and several podcasts and admit. They really lost the fight to me. And I just hope the IBF do the same thing with the WBC and have a resolution, man, and, and overturn that decision because that's the title that I originally fought for, the IBF, you know, and, and do the right thing. Absolute, man. What, is, what was one of your most heartbreaking fights, man, that you've been in outside of, like, robberies? What, what is a, a, one of the heartbreaks that you faced? Oh, when I fought James Tunney, you know, he whooped, knocked out Holyfield, you know, he, you know, he outclassed John Reed, beat the dog out of him. We, you know, a lot of fighters. Some of my other former uh, sparring partners, like Jason Robson, just to name a few. And so everybody thought he was going to knock me out, you know. And uh, you guys check that fight out. You see, I clowned him. You know, I hurt him. And, you know, he was trying to do that slick stuff with me. But that that didn't work. And, you know, because this bogus referee said had, had hit him with a rabbit punch and stuff. And that, that took the fight away from me from a split decision. So... If it was for that rabbit punch, I would have won, you know, majority of this. I mean, it's just sad that boxing been doing me wrong like that, man. And, and that's the fight that, you know, should have put me into the International Hall of Fame because I, I whooped the man that knocked out Holyfield. Man, and, and what has there been any fights that kind of pull your joy away from the sport? At what moment did you start kind of losing the joy from the sport? Was it the robberies or, or what kind of? You know, put this, you know, kind of bad, you know, put a bad moment yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. When career. I fought Holyfield, speaking of Holyfield, Holyfield at the San Antonio Alamo Dome in 2006, you know, for the number one world ranking, beat the dog out of him. You know what I mean? You know, I had an off balance, you know, shot that he caught me with. And, you know, oh, in that first round. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But as you can see, I had to pick it up. I still whooped in the end of that round and I, I punched him throughout the whole fight. You know, if, if you see, you know, the, 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 the punch that I clearly out jabbed him, I powered him, you know, all that stuff. And I clearly, you know, I boxed him, you know, and and even the San Antonio Express, the prestigious newspaper from San Antonio, Texas, they had me winning 116 and 112. 
So that's another fight that, you know, people are like, man, I don't know how you keep going, man. All these robberies against world Hall of Famers, you know, International Box Hall of Famers, and, and they just and, – and, and it's sad, man, that I should be recognized, you know. Right, absolutely. What made you keep going, though? Oh, the world of fight. You know, remember, I came from nothing. I'm from the projects. I came, you know, from the Chicago Housing Projects. You know, if you survive that, you pretty much can survive anything. The Serengeti, you know, in the sport of boxing, which I did. And I still had that drive, man. You know, just, you know, my kids, you know, they keep me going. You know, my wife, you know, my family, man. And that's, that's how it was. And the motivation, the fire was there until the WBA you know, did the wrong thing and, and took my title shot away that I, that I earned hard, you know, in my 40s, whooping all these young youngsters in their 20s, 30s, and I was in my 40s whooping them. Man, absolutely. And then you got some uh, questions out the chat, and then I got a few of my own related to your career. So uh, Kenny Porter's right hand wants me to ask you about Bivol or Better Beef, which one of those uh, uh, light, light heavyweights you got? Oh, uh, man, I'm going to go with the boxing, man. So, Bivol, you see what he did to Canelo? Schooled him while Canelo was at his best. Canelo was off. You know, and I heard Canelo recent, recently getting ready to fight. Uh, they talking about Badu Jack and shit. Yeah, man, that's my man, man. Badu Jack going to put a hurt. And the way Canelo looked in his last fight against, you know, against uh, Tony Brown, I mean, whatever his name is, uh, you know. Jack Johnson or whatever his name is. I mean, I forgot. Uh, what's the name? I, I know you're talking about. Was it Caleb? <laughs> no, it wasn't Caleb Smith, but I know you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's one of them, you know, honky tonk guys. But man, he made. I mean, uh, Canelo looks <laughs> like suspect. Like it's time for him to, to put up the gloves. Yeah, yeah. He he done really lost something. And then uh, Velocity yeah. Cuts want to ask, what do you think of these silly ass exhibition fights? You seen what? Yeah, I saw. I showed you the video with uh yeah. the thing that happened to Floyd <laughs> shit yesterday. Oh uh, yeah, straight uh, bozo show. But you know he's mugging the game, and I heard by doing these exhibitions, man, he ended up surpassing Michael Jordan as the richest athlete. I don't know if a lot of people know, but he's in the Forbes magazine, yeah, it's because he's you know Mickey Mouse ex exhibitions. But me myself, you know, I'm gonna keep it 100. I like to do a little couple exhibitions. I'm still in great shape, you know. I, I run every day. I'm getting ready for my first marathon because. You know, that was one of my goals when I turned the big 5-0. You know, I just turned 5-0 last month. And, uh, man, I look forward to running this 26.2-mile uh, run in Damn. Honolulu, Hawaii. Yeah, me and my daughter, we're going to uh, do this uh, marathon, and that's my goal, you know. And when I'm, you know, out, out of boxing, you know, I want to do the little marathon. But, uh, yeah, man, um, you know, you know, uh, I stay in shape, man, through running. Uh, conditioning, boxing, you know, stuff like that. So I, I hope I can do a little exhibition, you know. You know, they, they, they've they been mentioning it to me. So hopefully, uh, you know, I'll do a little, little sparring session. It's not bad. Absolutely. Man, get some of that money, man. <laughs> right, exactly. Right, right. Get some of that bread. But it's great right, that man, you, you're man, staying man. in shape and maintaining right. that the health, oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Absolutely. And so you get in there with any of the youth in your program? Do you get in, get in the gloves, go light with any of the kids? Um, majority of the time, not, not really, you know, because a lot of a lot of them are green and they just, you know, new. But uh, but some some of my dad, yeah, yeah, like I have my prospect Bowler. He won the U.S. Championships last year, and he's pro right, right now. He's six and zero, light heavyweight, a really good prospect. You guys gotta check him out, Bowler. Yeah, he was oh, yeah. USA champ, one hundred seventy nine pound champ. Right mm -hmm. on, coming out of Chicago. Yeah, shy time. Yeah, yes, sir. And we got another one out the chat. This is uh Jashan Axon. What do you think about uh Dave Morrell Jr.? This is what you think about him. Dave Morrell. He's that kid that's calling out David Benavidez, the one from uh he's a Cuban kid, but he's fighting out oh. in Minneapolis. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, he just fought recently, correct? He fought somebody recently. Yep, he just fought recently, yep. Um yeah, he's 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 chewing more than he, he's eating more than he can chew because you know, he's calling Bonavita as the monster. Uh, uh, he ain't ready for that. Me personally, I don't think he's ready for that. And then Jashan wanted to ask, why didn't you go to the 96 Olympics? You you won a, you won a, a silver or something, right? No, in the Olympics, Nate Jones ended up beating me you know, in the trials. You know, he ended up edging me. He ended up going to 
to the to the Atlanta games and uh, he won the bronze medal. Uh, oh, you want you are trying for Puerto Rico. You're fighting for the for for the U.S. US. Yeah, I, if I went to Puerto Rico, I would have made the team. Yeah, I could have fought him in the Olympics, but you know, I took the hard road and gambled, and and here I am. You know, end up surpassing me, Joe's in the pros. And then, what was the process of getting up there, man? How 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 uh, uh, grueling was that? What's the the process or the steps that a, an amateur has to go in order to make in the Olympic team. Oh, yeah, you got to win these tournaments, you know. I end up winning the National Golden Gloves. You got to keep winning these national tournaments, you know, the Olympic trials, stuff like that. You know, a little politic into, you know, I, I personally think, and stuff like that. Right. And what, what are the politics you're talking about? Just certain cities get favoritism or being associated with certain type of trainers or what? That too. That too. And who end up who end up winning the the, the uh, gold during that that ninety six Olympic? Oh, uh, old Cuban dude uh, by the name of Felix Savon. Oh, the the Cubans still had the Cubans always producing something, huh? Yeah, but the thing is, you know, he was like in his thirties at that time, and he never had a pro career, so he ended up retiring. And it's sad that you know he's not doing too well. I heard you know he's you know in his late fifties and you know not really doing well, you know financially or physically right right and that's a sad thing man seeing <laughs> that man you got more questions coming out bruce gas says did you think you won the uh fight against oliver mccall man man did i think you gotta watch it you gotta watch it on youtube that's another fighter Oliver McCall himself man you know he said man you know it could have went either way for you know for him to say that a grand champ that knocked out lennox lewis the undisputed champ cold and I ended up not only going 12 rounds, you know, I appointed him. And that's another one, injustice because, you know, he was with the promoter from Florida and, and I'm fighting in his hometown. And and here I go, you know, injustices. But, you know, to this day, you know, well, Otto McCall, you know, he was one, one of my main sparring partners throughout my last several years of my career. You know, when I fought for the heavyweight champion, championship against Ruth Sanchez, you know, I hired Otto McCall to be one of my main sparring partners. And, uh, it's sad how boxing did him, you know, a great champion. And then what, what would you say boxing did with him? Or was his more of mental health? Did his, Was it more of his mental health or boxing that did him wrong? Um, well, boxing that did him wrong, which caused his upgrade in mental health. So that's why he ended up having mental issues because of boxing. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. And then uh, Kenny Porter, right? Uh, Kenny Porter's right hand says, who, who hit you the hardest in your career? Man, um, when I fought the 1996 Olympic, I think silver medalist, uh, Duncan Duckworth, uh, he, he was from Nigeria. He was like six foot six, 250 pounds. I fought him in the undercard when Mike Tyson knocked out France while both a fight that Mike Tyson was losing. And to, you know, he ended up you know, getting desperate and, and knocked him out. I fought in the swing bout and I fought right after that fight. And I fought the 1996, you know, medalist the favorite to knock me out and he was like 15 0 with 15 first round knockout i ended up you know knocking him down like two times in the six rounds it was a wrap but he so had he had a punch had on him the prospect of the year award you know that year from espn wow wow but he he, he ended up catching with a, a good shot that was the hardest punch yeah because if you see there's a picture of me and mike tyson i don't know if it's still online but you see big two big old knots on my head my forehead that's a hardy hit, but I took it well, and that's why I learned that damn, I can take a punch. <laughs> Man, I thought you would have said elite, like the David Tua fight. What was that fight? What was it like being in the ring against that guy? Man, you know what? It, it was a pretty, believe it or not, it was a pretty easy fight. I, you know, I don't want to disrespect no It was easy until later rounds. I started getting a little fatigue and started getting a little too overconfident. So I, I thought I heard him in that eighth round and the next round. I ended up trying to, you know, put it on him, and he caught me with an old man right. And man, that's the project. Not even with his signature left hook, he caught me with an overhand right, a punch that I didn't even expect. And I was immature. I was in my twenties, and you know I learned a lot from that fight. And to this day, you know we both got inducted to the Hall of Fame, Florida Hall of Fame last year together. It was great seeing each other. He called me, you know, gave me number of respect. That like, man, you're a, you're a champ, man. You know he, he he just impressed that I kept on fighting for so long. You know I, I outlived, you know a lot of these Olympians. You know and, and and should have, could have, would have, and, and finally I am a world heavyweight champ. Man, that's what's up. Because how long your career went for? How long you stayed in there? 
And oh, I was man. watching that tour fight, I think last month, man, because I watch oh. how he tried to jump out the gate early. Oh man, once man. you start he, to settle, I see you start to use that yeah. jab and moving. So they put you in a small ring. Right, because if, if it would have been going later on, it's gonna be bad for him because he has to play that catch up game. So yeah, man, um, you know, I, you know, I learned a lot. You know, it was a fight that, you know, I was cocky at the time. I was in my twenties, and you know, a fight that I learned to be patient and be humble, and not go in there thinking, oh, I'm on the feet, oh, I hurt him, oh, I'm gonna knock him out, and I got caught with a punch that, you know, I didn't expect to get hit with, which was the overhand right. Right. Dang, man. And how bittersweet with that? Because that was your first loss, right? Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. It was heartbreaking, man. It's just like, damn, I was on a roll. Because right after that fight, I had multi-million dollar deals, you know, fighting even Foreman. You know, after Foreman, you know, edged out, uh, you know, he should have beat Shannon Briggs. And and they robbed they robbed Foreman against Briggs. He beat the dog out of Shannon Briggs. And Shannon what? Briggs, they took the linear title or something like that. But, uh, you know, there was a possible fight, me and, and Foreman, right after uh, – that fight. Oh damn! Yeah. How, how, and, and and going into that, like the loss, like the days after that. How how long were you down? And how did you how did you go about to getting yourself back up to continuing on after that? I mean, you know, remember I, I'm from the projects, man. I came from you know third world, Puerto Rico to Chicago, and you know I was hurt. You know the first couple, of, like damn, man, I should have, could have, would have. You know, I, I should have just. Stayed, took a knee, and you know I was a little hurt and recuperate. But you know my machismo mode didn't let me, you know, be, be you know overcoming, you know that fight. But uh, you know it's a fight that I learned, you know, and uh, I learned a lot. And uh, you know I knew what to do next time. You know this is boxing. You know, Absolutely. Yeah. And then how pivotal? How pivotal was uh, Papa? Uh, uh, Trinidad in your career, and how did how did that uh, uh, relationship man, come about? That one, man, that man changed my career, and my life, my mental health, and my confidence because I never thought coming from the Olymp I mean, coming from the amateurs, you know, having all the ch chip stacks against me. Because remember, I didn't go to the Olympics. You know, I was a highly touted, you know, top rated heavyweight. You know, I was in there like the, you know, uh, Shannon Briggs. Pat Wolf Graham, Lawrence Clay Bay, uh, Monty Barrett, you know, just to name a few, you know, Lance Whitaker, and Miles Elise. You know, I was the smallest one, heavyweight in that generation in the class of 96. And here I am, you know, decades later, still fighting for the heavyweight championship because of my, you know, um, you know how you say, uh, perseverance, you know, just overcoming, you know, obstacles in my career that, that stay in front and, you know, I had nothing to lose and all to gain. So, you know, I think Trinidad, you know, to get, make me gain that confidence, to believe in myself, you know, care for the housing project, you know, find these world mammoth, you know, fighters and, and overcoming and still maintain that level. And then from Trinidad, and I'm being blessed with, with Freddie Roach, you know, Freddie Roach is there for the Holyfield fight for the Javier Moore, um, who just finished knocking out Kirk Johnson, who's a uh, world heavyweight, contender from Canada, you know, and, and then I ended up almost knocking him out in the first round, but I beat him. And Freddie Rose taught me, you know, a lot more confidence as well, like Trinidad. And after that, that's when I went with Nate Jones, you know, my uh, former uh, arch rival from the Cabrini Green Projects. And it was like a mile away that we, we were from, from each other's projects. And I got to ask this, man, what goes into a training camp? Like, especially with uh, uh, a Papa Trinidad training camp, and then a, a, um, a, a Freddie Roach training camp. As far as what you're doing in diet, sleep preparations, conditioning, what goes into that? Because a lot of us just see the final results. So y'all in the ring boxing it out. What is that eight to six to eight week training camp like? No, great question. Great question, and champ. You know, always because you know, you know, Reg and 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 fights. When you were different camps, it's always different strategies. And when I was a trainer, at, you know, it was the beginning of my boxing career. It was the beginning of having confidence, the beginning of having hope to be fighting in world class, not you know, not the top fighters in HBO or Showtime, but for the World Heavyweight Championship, the most prestigious title. So that was very important for me, uh, going you know, go, going up in the world class of boxing when I was a trainer. That was the best move. Going back to my 
my country where I was born in Puerto Rico. And um, I had a great career, you know, unfortunately, Tito Trinidad, he ended up retiring, so his father ended up retiring back in 2002. So, you know, it was just a sign that, you know what, you know, you know, Tito Trinidad is not there, so I ended up uh, switching with, with a Puerto Rican trainer, uh, Bonilla, who's uh, uh, another great trainer, actually trained uh, uh, Madison, Miranda, Miranda, you know, former super middleweight champ who fought. Oh, yeah, he can punch. Yeah. I remember Miranda, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so his trainer was my trainer after the trainer that when I was in Puerto Rico for another year or two. But then I ended up coming back to the States, and one of my friends knew Freddie Roach, and actually my friend's uh, brother worked for Freddie Roach at the, at the Wild Card Gym. And man, I ended up hooking up with Freddie Roach back in 2000. You know, five, you know, because I took a couple of years break hiatus after I left Puerto Rico. I took a little break in 2004 or five around there. And then, you know, I came back in 06 and, and I was afraid. And, and, and it's like, wow, who, look at my stable, man. I got the great uh, Manny Pacquiao. Oh, you froze up. Wait till for him to freeze. I got some more. I got Trinidad. more questions for later. Okay. Oh, wait, there you go. You froze up for a second. There you go. Okay. And then, you know, I was in, in training camp in the same, you know, ring with Manny Pacquiao, shout out like, wow, man, this is, this is awesome, man. Cause, um, you know, with Tito, when I was with Tito Trinidad's dad, you know, it was an honor to be training right next to one of the all time greats from Puerto Rico, if not the greatest fighter from Puerto Rico, Tito Trinidad, who was my stable mate. And now here I am going to, this, to, to California, another beautiful state. And, uh, man, tra training next to the iconic, you know, Pac uh, Pac Man. And uh, man, it brought a lot of confidence, you know, with, with Freddie Roach. He showed me nothing but love from the beginning. You know, he loved heavyweights, and and I was like his first Puerto Rican fighter that Freddie Roach uh, trained. And he started training uh, Cotto and some other ones, just to name a few. But I was his first, you know, no world world class uh, fighter, you know, heavyweight. Man, right on. Because I gotta go stay in this training camp thing. So when it came down to the conditioning, strength and conditioning, as far as getting up for your runs, were you were you the one that had to be disciplined with that or was Trinidad them assigning some training yes. to get you up in the morning? Yes, yes, I had, I had a running coach. Yes, and that was a great experience, yes. And then after that, I had a weight training coach. So, and then after that, I had my boxing coach, which is proper Trinidad. So yes, that just took me to a different level. And that's what was the difference to make, from making me a regular, you know, Joe Blow coming up in the amateur to a world class athlete, and just like in the NBA, look who, who just won an NBA Dokovic, uh, you know, that center from um, Denver Nuggets. You know, the kid was, you know, right. second round, something like that. MVP, smash Mammy, you know, and that's how I was, you know, return pro. I was the least out of the class of 96 in the heavyweight division to not only make it you know, to HBO Showtime status, but fighting for the most prestigious title in sports in the heavyweight championship. And I was the little guy. Right. And then I got going to this. So in staying in training camp, when it came down to the running program, what were they doing as far as how many miles were you doing? Yeah. And then yeah. other uh, uh, sprint drills. What kind yeah. of drills were you doing to get in yeah. that shape? Like two days a week, we'll do sprint. Like Tuesday and Thursday. Then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we'll do a nice little three, four mile run with Tito Trent. So, this is stuff that I never done in my career, in my life. You know, I mean, the amateurs I ran, but not like how I did. You know, running mountains and 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 a fort. You know, and, and the mountains in Puerto Rico. And uh, man, it, it was a great, great training camp. Man, I was in the best shapes of my life. And then that's how I was in. And um, actually, I was a big bear before I even went with Trinidad. I had training camp with with Dan Goosen, with one of the Dan Goosen brothers and Big Bear. I forgot about that when I turned pro with America Presents at the time, who Matt Tilly and Dan Goose and me, he rest in peace, were my promoters, my first promoters. And then, um, you know, was the trend ad. And after the trend ad, Freddie Roach in California was beautiful, you know. You know, I was training for the Holyfield fight. I had a great training camp, you know, running these mountains, you know, great nutrition. I used to go to Whole Foods and all that. You know, dieting is so important, man. It's like majority of the of the battle, you know, make sure you eat right. You eat garbage, drink pop, you're gonna feel it in sparring, you know, you're gonna feel it in your training camp. So, you know, those training camps are so important to eat right, uh, get get up in the mornings, get it out the way, and rest. You know, we gotta rest our body, you know, stretching, stretching is very important. Of course, running. 
that stamina. I know Mount was, I can see why Pacquiao was so dominant, you know, back in his uh, era. Absolutely. Now going back, back in training camp, weight training, what, what did that consist of? Oh, weight training. Yeah. Um, you know, we didn't ever get power lift. We just conditioned to, uh, you know, make sure we do like a little power lift, you know, for, for explosion, um, you know, a lot of, like like left like lifting weights in the legs, you're getting your legs strong. You know, not too much power left because my mom was a technical fighter. So basically, uh, strengthening. You know, little pull ups, push ups. I like that more than any power lifting. Right on, right on. Yeah, I like going into those little intricacies and into preparations for fighters, it. man. Very and important. You got some, I'll say that again. Uh, that's the point. It's very important you ask those questions because. A lot of people don't ask these questions. And that's one of the most integral part of us you know, succeeding in our career in any sport or entertainment. Absolute, absolute. And we got uh, some more comments in the uh, in the uh, questions in the comments. I want to get to that they're asking of you. It says, did you watch the Munguia Devonchenko fight, and who do you think won? And did you see AB and your thoughts on AB? Uh, what should be his, uh, next for him? I mean, you know, they put a perfect opponent who, who could barely. Pop, break an egg, whatever. So you end up beating him, but you know, he needs a lot to come back from. Because I heard he was drinking a lot, of some alcohol and all that. You know, alcohol is terrible for the brain, man. It shrinks the brain. A lot of people don't know that. You know, smoking weed, all that is. You know, want to be cool and I mean, man, he's gonna take a lot to get back to to your old self, especially when you're aging. So I highly recommend for nobody to drink. And smoke, regardless of weed or anything, even edibles. You know, I mean, I hear it's cool and all that. I, I you know, that's why I made whether at his age, milk of the game. You know, he don't drink, he don't smoke, he don't do no car show stuff, and no more power to him. You know, I appreciate you know uh, my my '93, you know, National Gold Girl teammate. You know, he showed me nothing but love when I see him at his gym. You know, I always have the doors open for my kids, for my foundation, and Nate Jones as well. And uh, you know. You know, that's great, man, when, when an athlete don't do none of those negative stuff to poison their body. Absolutely, absolutely. And did you see the Munguia devonchenko fight? Who's Munguia? That's the uh, De La Hoya, um, a fighter out of Mexico with De La Hoya. You know, I, didn't was, that, but I heard it was kind of controversial. I guess he was getting, he was losing, but he knocked out, he knocked down the guy. Is that how he got the decision? Yeah, he got one knockdown. It was a, it was a grueling fight. I don't. <clears throat> I can't call it a, a a robbery or anything. They were they were banging, but I think there were a lot of moments to where he looked like he may have lost the fight, and it could have took rounds. But it was such a back and forth uh, battle between those two. Yeah, I heard it was pretty. No, but I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Yes, sir. And then we got more questions, man. A lot of because man, that's the thing. Like with with because we boxing nerds, friends, mm -hmm. and so we get boxes on here. We be asking all these questions, man, especially. <laughs> You know, being able to pull video, send you in there, man. Uh, and I got more questions for you as well. And then Jashan says he wanted me to ask you, who's the most skilled fighter that you face? Is it James Tony, Chris Bird, or someone else? Man, believe it or not, um, gave me a problem because he had height and reach. He, he had a pop was Mo Harris. You know, that was from the number one ranking. Oh, Maurice. Yeah, Maurice, Mo Harris. I said that he had a bad management. You know, very good talent, and uh, but just didn't have good people representing him, and he was very dangerous. But I ended up knocking him out. But but he 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 was dangerous, very dangerous. Wow! So you you put him above the James Tony, Chris Bird, and all them? No, 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 no. no. I, I I gotta say, Chris Bird, Chris Bird. Oh, Chris Bird, you give it, give it to? Because yeah. he was doing this thing around that time, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, yep. end up getting the Klitschko victory and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, Brian that era. Yep, you're right. Yeah. Have you ever sparred with any of the Klitschko brothers? Who yeah, was one uh, of the, the top guys of that era you've been in the gym yeah, and sparred with? The one who's mayor. Yeah, had a great sparring session. Actually, at one time, he ended up stopping the, the, the sparring session and, and went to Zivic. May he rest in peace. His, his boxing coach who passed away from Germany. Um, he's like, man, how's this, you know, shorter guy? You know, and his language, I guess, uh, Ukrainian language or whatever. How the hell he keeps hit, hitting me with overhand rights? Because I kept, man, using my jab, you know, I thought, you know, I threw him off. And I kept landing that overhand right on him. 
And uh, man, I had a great training camp, man. He showed me nothing but love, you know. He brought his family, you know, to eat with us and everything, man. Dude was straight humble, man. He was he was the people's champ, man. Great, great, great brother. And I learned a lot from him. And that's the the big brother who fought Lennox Lewis, right? Yes, yeah, yes, that's the one. Yep, yep. Yes, sir. Who else you been in there with, man? That you sparred with? That may not so much been in the ring with that you sparred with. Uh, you know me, Alex McCall. Like I say, he's my spar partner. Uh, who else? Uh, man, um, 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 you know, I was never like a spar partner. Type, you know, I I was doing my thing. You know, so my career was you know taking off. And I also had James Tony one time at, at the Fish Street Gym. Well, I, I had, we had a great spar sessions before we fought each other. And I wish I get that tape, but I, I heard his, his management, his manager, author. Remember his, his manager, author, or whatever his name was? No, I don't remember him. Oh, okay. He had it, but I heard he passed away. So ain't no telling where that, that video is. But Freddie Roach, I'll never forget, man, that, you know, he pretty much damn near had to stop the session because, you know, style makes fights. And you can see my fight against James. You know, I gave him the blues. And what are your thoughts on sparring? Like the intentions, like going into a camp, I guess, because, there, there's different type of sparring. You do sparring when you're just trying to get work in, mm -hmm. and then when you have sparring partners brought in the camp. Right. As a, as a lead of a camp, what can you give us? What 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 is a fighter supposed to do what, with sparring and the purpose yeah. of it? So it, it depends the style of fighter. It has to emulate the fighter you fight. So you spar with someone that emulates your opponent that you get ready to fight. You know, so you get the you know the most uh, fighter that resemble. Whichever you know, fight it in the championship you you emulate. So you know it's just not anyone because everybody's style is different. I mean, you can be spot with a puncher and you find a slick fighter or a counter puncher or orthodox fighter. So it, it all depends, you know, what type of fighter you you find, you know, at that time, which is going to be who who you're going to spar with. And then, how hard should a sparring go inside of a camp? And are you oh. are, is, are you going to put the fighter in headgear or you want him out of headgear? Oh, no, no, headgear, everything, you know, uh, 16 ounces and all to protect, we, you know, to protect each fighter. That's very important. And, and we go all out, you know, all out. Ain't no half stepping out. You go in there, you know, take your head off. That's what you're getting paid for. And this is going into a camp. And the, the yeah. trainers are observing when they need to stop something and all that, right? Right. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I mean, he took enough. Here, you go out, bring the next one in. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And we got another question. We got uh, Jashan says, asks, uh, says, um, who is the next guy up in Chicago? Says, you don't really uh, hear about Chicago when it comes to boxing. Like I said, Bola. Uh, he's one of the uh, Anisario brothers. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Jason Smollett case, those two Nigerian brothers from Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought I told you before. Yeah, so the young, the younger one, the smaller one, and he's very talented. You know, he came from the St. Carl, the gym where I started at Hamlin Park, like I was just telling you. He was one of the fighters that came from the same trainer where I came from, Bill Hagler. And, uh, man, the kid is a softball, doing great, man. And uh, he's uh, – you gonna be he's ranked number 20, I believe, the WBC right now in the light heavyweight. I got him ranked, you know, because I'm you know ambassador of the WBC. So that's that's one of the up and coming fighters from Chicago. You guys gotta keep your eye on. Absolutely, absolute. Mm -hmm. And then let me see. He says, Oh, yeah, they had Kenneth Sims Jr. Where he oh, was a kid out of yeah, Chicago. Yep, yep. He's well, he starts falling off, man. But I think he got too caught up in the hype of knocking cats out. Unfortunately, some of these kids get stuff getting ahead before they even fight for championships. But we'll see. You know, he ended up getting a loss. Up, he got a loss, right? I believe already. I think he got a couple of them. He has had like back-to-back -back losses. Oh, really? Yeah. So I got he's on the winning streak right now, and hopefully, he learned from his mistakes and be humble and and be and be you know a, a generous fighter and appreciate the fighter, not uh, overly you know not humble and and arrogant because those fighters don't last. Absolutely. Yeah, he got very, he started getting very, very arrogant. We got Kenny, <laughs> Kenny says, who do you, uh, who do you see winning between Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney? Oh, Shakur Stevenson, <laughs> hands down, boxing lesson, Puerto Rico. What? <laughs> and and, and, uh, and yeah. what do you, what do you see with his skill set versus the flaws in Devin Haney's skill set? 
Yeah, Devin Haney, he lost that fight against Lomachenko, man. Let me tell you, man. I mean, I know a lot of people, oh, you got to take it from the champions and that. No, I, I hear you, but he, he got out punched, man, and he got hurt. I mean, he he took a, you know, he took some nice, you know, beans in, in several rounds. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that he gets his well deserved rematch. But I heard he's moving up in weight, so I don't know how true that is for him to, you know, fight the rematch. So, you know, we'll we'll, we'll see and wait. Sit and wait. I, I don't know. I don't know what's next for Haney. Yeah, I got Haney beating these guys, and I had Haney whooping on 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 uh, uh, Loma. Loma sitting there crying, man, like a poor sport, man. <laughs> Be a poor sport. Well, you know, he fought hard. You know, he was fighting for his country. You know, so sad for his country going through all this madness against this cutthroat, you know, dictator. You know, oh, yeah, Putin, Russia. man. Yeah, man. So he, you know, he had his whole country behind him, and you know, he felt like he let him down, whatever. But he did. He he put up a good fight against a great champion, you know, Haney. You know, but what turned me off by Haney? You know, I was I was a Haney fan. Is that when he pushed him in the way, man? You don't do that, man. How about he would have, you know, fell and bust his head, and, and the fight is over with, and then you would get suspended, and he he ended up getting deducted right like a half a million or some shit yeah i think it took like four hundred thousand or something what he was what he man, posted on online dude, that, that's very unsportsmanship like man i mean his father should should tell him more than that man you know his father unfortunately is a yes man but you know you don't do that in boxing man you don't see floyd you don't see you know classy fighters you know like myself and i mean put i mean come on man do that in the ring so bringing up the push what did you think about riddick bow during your days Oh, that's another one. Yeah, that, that was that. You know, I was young, and you know that that was wrong for Bobo. I totally disagree what Bobo did with uh with uh old boy from Cincinnati. Uh, Who was that, Larry Donald? Yeah, Larry Donald. <laughs> man, you got history, no history. Yes, yes, yeah. That was that was a cool. You know, even yeah. though we, oh, we see each other, we cool. We see, actually, I seen him in in uh, Acapulco this past November, so uh, we kicked it. You know, you can see him on my Instagram, Fred Okendo. And uh, man, we kicked it hard. Yes, sir. And then we got one more. Let me see. What's the name? Uh, Boxing MMA was saying I watched so much of uh, Fred's fights, especially his big fights against Ruiz, Bird, Tony, Vander, and Ruslan. Says great career, man. Oh man, Tom, thank you so much, man. You know, all the hard work finally paid off, so I'm finally recognized. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Better sir. Better than that for 20 years later, but hey, you got the belt, you. man. How heavy are those belts, man? Oh, they're pretty heavy, man. Gold plated. I mean, leather. I mean, yeah, it's pretty heavy. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. Yeah, because I held a, a championship belt a while ago, and I always remember the weight for it. I was much yeah, younger. It's heavy, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then Jashan, Jashan got a question. He wanted me to ask you about uh, Xander Zayas. Says, do you think he's up? Says, and uh, what does he think about uh, his comparisons to Miguel Cotto? I guess they're comparing Xander to Miguel. Well, uh, he's a long way from being compared to Miguel. Miguel was a four time, first and only four time the multi division champion in Puerto Rico. So I'm surprised they even compare him. He hasn't even won a world championship. Is he even a top 10 contender yet? Nope. I just think he's a guy being promoted by top ranking ESPN. Oh, so he's got a powerful promoter. Yeah. So they're going to, okay. So he has a lot of pressure. We'll see. I mean, I've seen him some fight, you know. So far, he's been pretty dominant. You know, they all have chances. I remember when Cotto was up and coming, you know, when I was training in Puerto Rico, and they ended up surpassing a lot of people's expectations and ended up being a dominant champion. And then what's up with the Puerto Rican scene, man? How did, how does the boxing become such a uh, big sport there? Because what is it? Baseball is a huge sport there. Yeah. And as well as boxing, man. Baseball, Who, boxing. Who's the legend? Yeah. Boxing and baseball are number one, two sports in Puerto Rico, and it's a great tradition. You know, and I, I'm a baseball fanatic. You know, I'm a Cubs fan. I'm a North Sider, so not a White Sox fan. I'm a I'm a Cubs fan, but uh, yeah, I, I love baseball. I respect the sport. Right, right. Who's a, who's an all time legend that a lot of people historically look up to from Puerto Rico that oh, that inspired the 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 sport of boxing? The great humanitarian like me. I'm a humanitarian. I do a lot of stuff with my foundation. The great Roberto Clemente, number 21, by far a legend, cried. My mom cried. She was in a hospital when they brought Roberto Clemente, you know, from the water, from the ocean. And they brought his body to the hospital where I was born. 
Central Medico, which is the hospital Hector Macho Camacho died. And my mom never forget that smell. You know, she almost fainted that, you know, when they were bringing his body, passing my mom. My mom was pregnant with me before I was even born. Yeah, man, it was a historic, uh, unfortunate. Oh, what happened to him? Because that's the baseball player, right? Yeah, yeah, the, the great baseball player. Yeah, the, 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 the flight to Nicaragua to help all those Nicaraguan, the poor kids. You know, he did humanitarian work. He had food and clothing for kids. And the plane crashed right there by San Juan. You know? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm going to I'm gonna have to check that story out. I didn't know oh, he died like that. Love it. The great Roberto Clemente. Yeah, his son, Roberto Clemente Jr., he follows me on Instagram. We communicate. Yeah, he's a big fan of mine. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff, mm -hmm. man. Now, going back into to your career, man, and getting up to the this point in uh in the sport, like with, with drawing, because you it was really hard for you to retire, man. What what kind of drew you to the point of how hard is it to walk away, especially when you've been doing this so long? How hard is it to really walk away from it? Well, remember, I never retired, man. I was still fighting in my late 40s, you know, like a couple of years ago. It's just sad that the WBA for their greens, you know, the president, Hiberto Mendoza, ended up putting a uh, manual chart against this bozo, Houston off, and they fought for the vacant. And then manual chart, you know, was supposed to fight uh, one of Don King's fighters, but he couldn't make the trip, so they stripped him. And then uh, Du Bois, that, that Du Bois dude fought uh, one of Don King's fighters, knocked him out a couple of rounds. Now Du Bois, that, that, that English dude from Europe, he's the WBA regular champion. I don't know if you're familiar. With the yeah, Dubai. yeah, Frank Warren fighter, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man. So that's what ended up happening, man. So, they, you know, that's why I got a, a lawsuit, a, a complaint against them. And they pretty much, you know, ruined my career. Right. But so your desire, your desire to walk away is it, it hasn't come. Right. Yeah. It, it's just, yeah, it's crazy, man. No, no. I you love fighting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how yep. and now I gotta ask this: how hard is it to not if you know dealing with, with civil like citizens, regular citizens who act tough, who act ignorant? How hard is it for you to restrain yourself from wanting to utilize your skill sets against someone out on the streets? Oh man, no, I, that's one thing. Street things, I don't get down with it, man. I'm, uh, you know, I'll let somebody do that. Um walk away now. I don't got time for none of that madness. If I if I ain't getting paid, I ain't doing no fighting. <laughs> so oh, so it's easy to just be like, yeah, whatever, and move yeah. move away from it. Yep. I, so that's the discipline comes from the sport yeah. then. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah. See, I always want I always want to ask that about does it because you have these skills, do you try to use them on people, or are you that disciplined <laughs> in, in the <laughs> art? That, that's a good that, question. Cause I'm pretty sure some yeah. other fighters, knuckleheads, probably do that in the streets. Gain no recognition by doing that. You knock it out of bum in the street, you know. No, I don't. I don't waste my time. Yeah, not me. Absolutely, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people recognize you as well. So. Oh yeah, yeah. They try to test me, take me to deep water. Nah, you bozo, clown. No, nah, I don't got time for you. Absolutely. Also, you have had to deal with the test and. Yeah. You have to walk away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy, yeah. man. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, straight bozos. Yeah. Right. Hey, so going into to like a, a, a career, so with the preparations of going into a fight, what are the processes of you looking for a fighter? Does a promoter come to you, present you with fights? Or were you a fighter that you asked for the fights that you wanted? No, I earned it by knocking out the contenders to get mandatory statuses. That's how I ended up earning them out. Nobody didn't want to fight me. I don't know if you hear about my career. I was one of those fighters. Man, no champion. Even Hasim Rockman one day came up to me. You know, when we were at Master Square Garden with Tito Trader, I fought William Johnson. said, man, Fry, you want to fight. I never want to fight, man. You know, he showed me nothing but love. But a lot of top heavyweights never want to fight me, you know, I guess because my style, you know, makes them, you know, you know, know that I, I would have beat him. So I was one of those styles that a lot of people didn't want to fight. I had that style. Right on. And then Jashawn wanted to ask, his question was, because of, uh, because of your age, do you feel that politics – the politics of boxing had an effect on your career, uh, is, is his last question. Um, that can have a factor, yeah. You know, the politics, uh, like I said, the greed and, you know, and moving on and the way the WBA did me, you know, age, 
age and money can have effect, especially against those Europeans. You know, they got a little money and try to get the groom their, their clown fighters, you know, who's not really world class like myself. You know, the title with, with money, yes. Right, right. And how, how bad was that corruption? Like, as you were, when did you see it start to become a huge problem? Or has it, it probably has always been there, right? Yeah, yeah, the, the boxing, the boxing history. Since Muhammad Ali days, yep, with Don King, yep. The right, main, right. Man. And ha have you ever done business a fight under a Don King promotion, or have you ever had to turn away when seeing it? Like, that's, this is the, the real question. Have you ever had to just turn away from a fight because of a promoter trying to rip you off when it came to negotiating how much you to be paid or whatnot? Yeah, yeah. You know, Don King, number one, he was my promoter. For so oh, you, you, oh, you worked with him? Yeah, yeah. My, it was for the bird fight. He knew I promoted the bird fight. He knew my, my last fight with Bird and my contract was like was gone. So he didn't want you know re, you know pay me my my uh, bonus and all that. So that's why Foreman when he interviewed when when he was uh, commentator for my fight, he said, "Damn man, whatever Don King paid these judges, man, they they, they bogus because you know I guess Don King you know, knew that you know he had to pay me because that was my last fight on his contract, and uh, and yeah man he uh, didn't pay me." My whole son, you know, in that fight. So, so I pretty much you had to take him to court. Yeah, I had to sue him, and so I ended up getting my release because he ended up, you know, just giving me my release, so I have to go through trial with him. Yes. Oh wow! So he's been on some foul stuff. Is, is that the only promoter that you ever had to deal with, as far as doing that type of yeah, crooked stuff yeah. with you? The rest of them, dang goose from my first one, no, no problem. Uh, even uh, uh, when I fought on ESPN against Castillo with the Cubans. You know, uh, the Cubas, you know, they gave me no problem. It was him and actually Roberto Duran, one of the greatest fighters of all time. He was one of my promoters. No problem. Uh, you know, man, no problem with these uh, other other promoters. Oh, wait. See, I didn't know. I never – so Roberto the brand got in the, the promotion of uh, boxing? Yeah, uh, yeah, when I fought uh, Alicel Castillo. Yeah, if you Google this, it was on ESPN. The Cuban, yeah, for WBO uh, Heavyweight Championship. Oh, wow. And then uh, Velocity want to ask, have you ever met Al Heyman? Says, is no. it uh, says is it true he stutters? We mean stutters. He met, does he, uh, Al Heyman has a stuttering problem. I never met him, but, you know, I heard he's being kind of shady to a lot of other fighters right now. So, you know, it doesn't surprise me. <clears throat> right, right. But you never, you never done business with under uh, Al Heyman? Well, when I was training... And actually sparring, yeah, I did spar with Chris Ariola when he was getting ready for Thomas Adamac because I was getting ready for a fight myself, you know. Uh, and um, I was at Riverside, California, sparring with Chris, Chris Ariola. And, and I did receive several checks from, I guess, Al Hamer's company. Oh, okay. But never never uh, uh, meeting him in person? No, in person. Ah. Uh, uh, uh. Dang, and I had another question. I should have wrote this one down. I always freestyle my questions. Man. Yeah, it, it, was going, it was related to um, – uh, oh, no, no, this is what it was. It was about the heavyweights. How do you look at the heavyweights? Who do you see between Tyson Fury and Usyk and whoever else is on the landscape that you think is currently the best heavyweight that you see in this uh, current picture of a heavyweight division? Deontay yeah. Wilder, Joshua, and all them. Yeah, yeah. Um. I, I uh, Fury, yeah, he's pretty pretty dominant. But this Cuban, this this uh, up and coming Cuban, Frank Frank Martinez, something like that. You know, he, he's one of the <clears throat> heavyweights to to follow. You know, pretty dangerous. Um, you know, he, he's pretty good. But Fury, you know, hands down, I think he's gonna be pretty dominant. But Usyk, you know, that dude is that dominant. He beat the dog out of uh. Out of um, Joshua, Joshua, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So Joshua's career is is history, but um, you know, I I, I get Tyson Fury uh, credit against Us because he's taller, more lame, you know, longer with his arms, jab, should, should, should you know, tee off on Usyk. So I, I give uh, Fury the edge on that fight. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then uh, my last one, man, between Anthony Joshua. 
Deontay Wilder. How do you see that fight going, man? Oh, oh so are they fighting? Is it official? I, it's not official, but they've been talking about because they said the Saudis are setting up uh trying to buy those fights between the uh setting up a heavyweight event. So it's gonna be wow. Usyk in them for the undisputed, and then trying to make the uh AJ Deontay Wilder. Those are the rumors, but they also rumors that Wilder's been meeting with the uh that MMA uh company that um that uh signed you remember the the heavyweight over in the ufc that went to pfl so they have uh, wilder's been with them so i don't know if he's gonna probably do a crossover fight event against him but there's oh. also talk about him and aj fighting man um uh, you know like i said um he ended up winning you know majority of his fights you know, he had that devastating power had no skills you know uh, i'm talking about wilder uh aj you know pretty skillful got good basics you know did a lot in the game. So the edge I'll give to AJ in that fight. Oh, you have AJ winning that one? Yeah. And it's just because of Wilder's lacking of, of skills. Yes. Yeah. But Wilder catches him, <laughs> it's a wrap. Yeah. So it, it's, you know, it's a pick and fight in that fight. Now you got me thinking it's a pick and fight because AJ is suspect ever since his <laughs> two suspect law. You know, it's, it, he got schooled both of those laws with Usyk. Yeah, and Andy Ruiz put a put a clinic on him as well. Yep, yep, exactly. And then what? Do, who, which one of these guys you see that can match up in the uh, the '90s class, or even in, in your uh, uh, your class during your era? The only one I can see is uh, man Tyson Fury. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. I definitely yeah. agree with that. Yeah, I do the freaking nature. He said he's crazy. He said Wilder sleeping, AJ. I, I kind of, I, I think, like you said, I think that's a pick and fight as well because I yeah. don't think Wilder is still the same fighter after those two no. fights against, against Well, you Fury. heard he, his skull cracked when he fought. Um, Fury. He fought, like, yeah, man, he, he's never the same. He fought him three times. And both and three of those fights, then went down near 12 rounds. So he took beatings all over his body. He'll never be the same. Even though he had a first round knockout against uh, that dude from fin Finland or whatever, uh, whatever his name is. But, um, yeah, we fight a Fury or someone that got boxing skills, uh, like like AJ. If AJ cracks him, it's going to be a wrap. Right, because AJ can punch himself. AJ can right. punch as well. That's what I'm saying, yep, yep. So if AJ catches because he's got better jab, better skills, he's got the better chance of catching Wilder before Wilder catches him. Absolutely. And then I'm going to go into this question with you about when there's there is, you know, they speak about, you know, these grueling fights and they'll be like that fight has taken something out of that fighter. They won't be the same out of, after this fight. Have yeah. you experienced that in a fight where a fight has taken, you know, I guess if people say like a step or taking some years off your career. Yeah. And if you can describe that, what what is that? Yeah, that is true. Fortunately for me. I don't get in wars. I don't fight rock and soccer type fights. You know, like, you know, those, you know, that video game that you hit me, it hit you back. Now, I was a technical fighter, jab, you hit without getting hit. Move so, around. My marbles. So, but yeah, it was some fights like that. Like when Foreman fought Ron Lyle, you know, they both knocked each other down like 10 times. Those type of fights takes a lot out of, of a person. And of course, Muhammad Ali. With Joe Joe Frazier rumble in the jungle, you know, he fought three times. And you see, you know, Joe was never the same after that. Or Muhammad. Right, absolutely, absolutely. And so that's where the the being more of a technical skill fighter, you know, brings longevity to the career yep. as well. Yep, you answered it. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Y'all, that's a hard line, that's a hard career, man, to go <laughs> yeah, to yeah. earn your check. You're thinking man. about it. You're right. Yeah, you're like, damn, I don't know how the hell I you all do it. You're right. See, people don't think that. Yeah. Right. Absolute, man. And then I'm going to go into this, man, like going into your boxing career. Do you remember your first fight ever? Yeah. Before yeah. any training? And how did it go? And, and how did you rate your skills back then? I was just kind of, you know, I was becoming, you know, I was confident. You know, uh, I was with a major promoter at the time. You know, they ended up signing a lot of highly touted uh, 1996 Olympians. Uh, the, the only Olympic gold medalist in 96, David Reed, was one of them they signed. And the promoters were America Present, Dan Goosen. Remember, you know, him? And, man, they signed me, you know, and, and that was a that was an honor, you know, for me to be with a bunch of, you know, Olympians, you know, Clay Bay, you know, uh, 
you know, people that he beat in the trials, uh, Lance Goofy Whitaker, uh, Pyle Wolfgram, Olympic Silver Medalist, and uh, and Duncan Duckworth from Nigeria, the one who I fought, who they were grooming to, you know, to be the next heavyweight champ. And they threw him in with me when we only had like 10 fights or something like that. So, yeah, I man, they put me through trials and tribulations, but thank God I ended up passing them. Right. I remember Clay Bay. Then something something happened to Clay Bay back in the day, right? Yeah, he got to get knocked out by uh, Javier, uh, by uh, Castillo, the one who I wanted to fight on ESPN. When I did my ESPN debut, he fought Castillo. Right. Castillo knocked him out. Retired him. Oh, because Castillo, I seen a, a, a video of you a while ago. I think you were saying Castillo is one of your toughest fights or something, yes, right? Yes, that yes. Dude. Yeah, we're like 100, 110 degrees weather, man, after that Fight, you know, I was supposed to take a pitch for, for drug test. I couldn't take a pitch. We had to wait like three, four hours. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly what you were saying in that yeah. interview. Yeah. 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 But Clay Bay, Clay Bay ended up dying in a car wreck or something, right? No, no, he's still alive. No, no. He's, he's still talking, alive. Yeah, you must be talking about something else. No, yeah, Clay yeah I gotta be talking to somebody else. Because I remember I always used to see Clay Bay on like when we used to have like our Tuesday night fights. Or yeah, like, yeah, he was fight on shows. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I should see him. It yeah. might have been somebody else around that time. I think it was another fighter that died in an accident that came from that era and stuff. I always thought it was Clay Bay, but I just remember right. seeing his name. What happened that he fell off the map? He ended up going back being a security officer, a correction officer. It's crazy. He was that. He was overweight, and he took boxing to lose weight. And when he retired, he ended up getting back to that job. That's crazy how life is. Oh, wow. So, yeah. so, that, so what made him – so he just like – the hell with boxing yeah, and going back yeah, to the career. Yeah, yeah. He's out through with you. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because, yeah, he used to all, I used to always hear Lawrence Clay Bay. Yeah. He, somebody he was else. the highly touted out of class of 96, out of all the us heavyweights in that class. Yeah, he was the, the top long, you know, attached long. He was the top, you know. Oh, wow. He just went back to, well, I guess he get a pension and all that stuff now. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> get hit in the head. Right. Yeah. yeah, that is crazy, man. What is what is the one thing you miss most about about being in there, man? Man, having my family, friends, you know, everybody at the event, you know, TV, you know, the the, the lights and cameras, and you know, the people greeting you. You know, I miss that. Right, right. Sean got a uh, more question. He said he lied. He could maybe say his last question, but he lied. He got yeah. more. He wanted to ask: had, Did you ever consider starting that light heavyweight? You know, they all say I was my heavyweight. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. He says that I couldn't even make cru cruiserweight because if I if I were to try to lose more than two hundred ten pounds, I would have been starving myself. Yeah, I've been malnutrition, so I, I could never be a, a light heavyweight. Also, it was just what you when you got in prime shape, you went down. What was your walk around weight at? Walk around weight was like two twenty eight, two thirty. Oh, so shit, you always been in shape, so you never got right. undisciplined with, with conditioning. Right. That had no habit. I ain't drink, I ain't smoke, and I still don't drink no smoke, so I ain't got no bad habits, yep. Oh, so that's a good thing, man. That's a right. real good thing. Yep, that's why I encourage a lot of these fighters, yep. And who who are your uh who are your idols coming up? Like who inspired you? You look up to as, as a boxer. Man, like I said, I started boxing because my dad would have me watch Muhammad Ali when he fought Leon Speak when I was a kid. I was like five, six years old. But then what pushed me further is to actually start boxing when I was thirteen or twelve when I watched uh, Sugar Ray Leonard versus Marvelous Marvin Hagler in nineteen eighty seven. And uh, man, that was a fight that I'll never forget. And man, that's what that's what what, what got me started. I got to meet my heroes. At the WBC convention, you know, years ago. Man, that's what's up, man. And then what, what's up with your brother? Because you said you start your brother was started in it first, and then what happened with his career? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. My brother, you know, he ended up uh, being he graduated from Loyola University, a prestigious school in Chicago, Loyola University. You know, their basketball team, and uh, but he was, you know, he was in in, uh, in, in law. And uh, he ended up going to John Marshall Law School, and uh, yeah, man, he just you know took took the the smart road, you know, the academic route. Oh, exactly. that's what's up, man. Yeah, yeah. Man, salute to Big Bro, man. That's yeah, what's up. Exactly. Did I send you my documentary that I did recently with the with, with the with the Northwestern University journalism uh, team? No. -uh. Oh, I'm gonna send it to you. Oh man, yeah. Oh, we're gonna have a lot more to talk to after this interview. I want to send it to you. 
But I didn't even think about it. Yeah, this, I just got it like a couple of days last weekend. This oh, you said it. I'm, I'm gonna see if I can upload. I'll upload it on the channel. Yes, yes. Oh, you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. I'm not even gonna tell you how it is. You gotta watch it. All right, yeah, yeah. Send that to me. I definitely want to check that out, man. Me and Nate definitely. Jones is in that documentary. You'll see it. All right, all right. And how and how Nate Jones been, man? Tell him we said salute, man. Oh, absolutely. Oh, he's doing good. You know, he's running the Austin Boxing Club, uh, this gym by uh, where our new mayor uh our uh, Johnson lives at. Uh, so he, uh, you know, he's he's doing real good. Absolutely. And then if you tell people on what side of the town that you, that your gym is, because it's people who come in anytime they'll see this and want to hear where your gym is. And then oh, yeah. as far as kids trying to get in, what is the process to get in and what are the fees as far as kids it's coming free. in? It's our foundation, FOBA. It's free. And um, the gym is called Austin Boxing Clubs in the west side of Chicago. You know, um, it's an extra... Brandon Johnson, our new mayor's neighborhood, and uh, man, we it's beautiful. It's a beautiful gym, and all kids are free. May y'all hear it? Free. It is free, and all the kids have to do is bring their own gear, or is that provided, or what does a kid have to come yeah. in the gym with? Yeah, you know, the, the little hand wraps and stuff like that. I mean, we'll provide the gloves and other stuff. Oh, see, that's what's up, man. You're a true, you're yeah. a true ambassador to the sport, man. Thank you, brother. It's, it's uh, always a thing when you, when boxers get back to the sport, especially at the uh, youth youth age and stuff. Right, it's very important. Very important. Absolute, absolute, man. But OG, that's all I got, man. Anything else uh, you got? You. Oh man, everybody, make sure they, they follow me on Instagram, Frez Okendo, and of course my foundation on Instagram as well, F O B A Foundation, which is Foba Foundation. And you can put that on your screen so everybody can follow me. That'll be awesome. Uh, the more likes you can see, you know, the more highlight you see these youth doing their thing, and uh, our new up and coming champs. You you got one more from Velocity Cut says, "What's the best Mexican food? Uh, what is that? Pilsen's or Little Village?" Oh wow, uh, good one, good one. Uh, Man, both, man. Oh, shucks, man. <laughs> I love both, man. Those are my neighborhoods, man. And I love them both, man. They got all walks of life. And, and man, I love, man. I'm Puerto Rican, but me personally, I love Mexican food. Edge my Puerto Rican food. I love my Puerto Rican food too, don't get me wrong. But I love Mexican food, man. I love it. And hey, yeah, hey, Mexican food, wherever they put that, man, they kind of. They 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 put a little bit of a uh, love into the heart of uh, oh, uh, big people's time. stomach with they oh, food. Oh man. yeah, because I was never a type to eat hot sauce and all that, but I eat a little green mild sauce, you know, just you know, because I like it. it. It's good, man. They got great flavor. I love it. Absolute, man. Yeah, I'll be seeing a lot of the uh, food because I think it's big in their culture, and they see yes. people do these travel shows and they go yep. eat place Mexico like. It's always when I'm watching in Mexico, it just has a variety of stuff. And they do everything with with an animal. They use every part of it and they're doing something with it. But I like I like soul food, but you don't find too many soul food restaurants that's worth right. it damn. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't find none. But that's all I got, OG, man. I'm gonna have to get you on here again, man. Let's do it. All right, cool. Make sure everybody follow me. Instagram. Yes, sir. When next time you uh traveling to Vegas? Uh probably soon, probably in the next month or so, a couple of months all right all right and when i took when i go to chicago i definitely gotta see you because i gotta go visit my old school man oh right, let's do it man represent yep yes sir i'm gonna send yeah. you that i mean uh the new documentary yes yes let me check that out and i want to upload it upload on yeah. the channel right. and the boxing right. mate says great interview friends says you. uh great uh, says a great says you're a great guy as well and documentary should be interesting thank you my brother all right cool i'll send you that in a bit Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We out of here. I salute. Salute. Peace, peace, y'all. All right, all right. And we got the champ, Fred Akendo, in the building, in the building, man. Appreciate that. Appreciate you guys tuning in and got some good information from him, man. And someone who has done it, give their experience with it. And that's what I love. I love to hear people's experiences with it. Uh, uh, what fighters go through the training camp. What inspired you to go into this, like walking in the gym overcoming nervousness and then stepping in there this is this is a tough thing to do to earn that check man and then kenny pours right hand great interview thank you bro appreciate that negative nine here go negative nine always hey let me see what you say he said reggie trying to get some tips so i <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Hey, nice. I'll try to get some tips so that I won't knock his ass out. <laughs> they was nah, you I can fight you with my pinky, man. Just whack you with my pinky and 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 beat you in the submission with it. But uh, that's all I got, folks. I'm gonna catch y'all on the next one, man. Thank you, Deshaun Brown. This is great stuff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're gonna get the OG on here some more, man. And uh, I'm gonna see that documentary get that uploaded as well. I'm gonna definitely upload that. And I put that video up where I was tell, talking about the old Magic Johnson show about when Magic Johnson used to host a TV show. I put that on there. For those who don't remember that Magic Johnson show, the one he did with Howard Stern, oh my God, that's when it was over for Magic. And then uh, Box MMA says, thanks, says, this was a brilliant, uh, this was brilliant, great to see you bringing in the guys like Fred's. Yes, indeed, man. I gotta try to get Lou Duvall. Y'all gotta hear, y'all gotta hear Lou as well. Lou Duvall used to train Badu Jack, matter of fact. Hear his story as well. He's a Puerto Rican fighter as well. That's why I should have asked. I should have asked Fred's about Lou. Uh, I should have brought up uh, Lou Duvall. But uh, Lou got an interesting story too. And then Kenny Poor's right hand says, hit the like button. Yes, indeed. Folks, hit that like button. And that's all I got. I'm out of here, man. Salute to them dang Denver Nuggets, man. Them Nuggets fans out there, man. Hey, y'all got a squad out there. I know some people diehard fans of that place they come. A lot. Of, it's going to be a lot of bandwagon people, though. Because I ain't never, ever, 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 ever in my life seen anybody claim the Denver Nuggets. There's going to be a lot of bandwagon people, but uh, 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 Jokic is a Denver Nugget goat. So uh, he's going to be, he going to go down to history, man. His chapter is written. Two-time MVP. Uh, uh, what else he got? The dang MVP of the, what, the finals, the, the uh, championship, swept the damn lake, a LeBron Laker team. Like, shit, man, his story is written. I was up there doubting him. And Nega Nine says, about to watch Fred's versus Chris Bird. Yeah, Fred's got some real good fights, man. He got real, real good fights. Him and Holyfield is a good one as well. But, folks, that's all I got. Catch you guys on the next one, man. Peace out.